the bell curve is one of the most important constructions in probability. It is also called the Gaussian or normal distribution. It's it, it shows up everywhere. It's super important, but in this video what I want to go over and what I want to see if we can find out is what is the area under the bell curve? If you went from negative infinity to positive infinity, what would the area under this super useful curve be? Now though, if you just went in ahead and wrote down the integral, integral obviously from negative infinity to positive infinity, e to the negative x squared dx, this integral is, even though it looks simple, it turns out to be super daunting and it is not at all easy to solve without numerical methods. But in this video what I want to do is show you a super clever foray into multivariable calculus that will tame this beast of an integral. So what I want to do is, and it might at first seem that this is going to make the problem needlessly complicated, but we're going to extend this one-dimensional bell curve here into two dimensions. y equals e to the negative, and then the two-dimensional analogy to the bell curve is e to the negative x squared plus y squared. And you might notice x squared plus y squared. This is the same as distance away from the origin. And this is going to come to be quite useful, distance squared really. This is going to be quite useful in a minute because it turns out we're going to be using polar integrals, right? Because if you, if you just take a look, if you're trying to find the volume under this this 2D bell curve instead of the 1D bell curve, if you just write it down with your run-of-the-mill double integral here, right, e to the negative x squared plus y squared, and let's just go dx dy, right, doesn't matter, we're going, we're covering the entire plane. This is even worse, probably, even worse than this other integral up here. But the key, the whole key of this is that we have this distance squared idea, right? That it's going to be rotationally symmetric, that if you have the idea of the this new 2D bell curve with a little z-axis poking out here, that it's going to be rotationally symmetric, that you're going to be able to draw little concentric circles about it, and that it's going to get smaller and smaller as and go to zero as it goes out. You can make this into a much better, and as you'll see, there's a clever way to solve it, into a polar integral. So let's write it down. So let's start with the angle, 0 to 2 pi. And now let's go on, 0 to infinity. And you only have to go 0 to infinity at all times, because if you remember, at every point, right, if you're going out and you're trying to trace something, if you you're trying to find the area, right? And you never have to go and find this area because as you go around the circle with all your angles, you're eventually going to get to it when you hit the 180 degrees and whatever the opposite angle is for any point. So you don't need to go from negative infinity to positive infinity, just to zero to infinity. And then, of course, we have e to the negative, not x squared plus y squared, but now negative r squared, negative radius squared, and then dr d theta, but then there's one more important thing in polar integrals, which is that you have to multiply the expression in here by r. Why do you have to multiply this by r? Well, in polar integration, there is something important to remember, right? So if we have a circle here, and we just consider a small sliver of angle, this is calculus, but I'm going to be drawing some rough rectangles here these rectangles get bigger as you go out and if you take a look at one of these rectangles say this rectangle for instance you see right it has one side is dr but then one side isn't d theta it's d theta times whatever r it was at right because if you look at a smaller piece right the dr stays the same but now this is d theta times a much smaller r because you can imagine, as you're calculating this out for farther and farther r's, the rectangles are going to get bigger. So that's why we have to multiply it by the theta. So now let's scroll down, because there's something extremely nice that comes from making this into the polar form. Because we now are multiplying by this r, we can say something very special. We have r squared and r in the same integral, 
and this is just screaming at us to use u substitution when you have the derivative of of one of the variables in your expression u substitution is just asking to be used so let's go ahead try to use it we can say let u equal r squared du equals 2r dr and then of course dr is going to be equal to du divided by 2r now if we go back here and we were to plug in our u's and du's we would have the integral from 0 to 2 pi that part hasn't changed and then we have again the integral from 0 to infinity again not changing from e to the negative u times r dr but dr is now du divided by 2r so we have du divided by 2r d theta okay and now this just equals 0 to 2 pi right and then again the integral from 0 to infinity but now again the r's are going to be canceling out and we can just take this one half to the front so I could really just say one half right out here We're multiplying by this whole thing and then we have just e to the negative u du d theta and this is really a best case scenario here this is really amazing so if we go on put on our calculation hats here let's just evaluate this quickly we have one half right again we have the integral from 0 to 2 pi but now we know the solution to this integral here we have e to the negative u du well of course that's just going to be negative e to the u uh, negative e to the negative u excuse me e to the u of course is just e to the x that's no the derivative doesn't change it and then the negative one in the composition you just take down because of the chain rule and then of course we could also just go ahead and replace u here at this point with uh, r squared so r squared it, it doesn't matter we can just keep it as u also um, because we're just going to be plugging it into here now zero and infinity and what do we get when we plug this and there should be a d theta here too what do we get when we plug in this zero to infinity well e to the negative infinity is just zero right as you go farther and farther down negative uh, negative exponents you approach zero okay that's zero so we have here zero or rather negative zero doesn't matter minus minus e to the negative zero e to the negative zero is just e to the zero is just one so minus negative one okay d theta this is just one so if we say here we have this value here this is just one well what's the integral of one d theta just theta so if we plug in here theta from zero to two pi what do we get we get one half of all right well two pi is going to be uh, well just two pi and then minus zero we get one half of two pi is pi this in of itself is an astounding result the area under the two-dimensional bell curve is pi that is really cool but it's not quite answering the question we set out to answer which is what is the area under the one-dimensional bell curve and to answer that we're going to have to do one last bit of clever mathematics so using this knowledge that we have about the two-dimensional bell curve let's write ourselves up here a little relationship so we have that the integral of from negative infinity to positive infinity of e to the negative x squared dx we have that this integral let's just call it equal to some value let's call it equal to um, C capital C okay this is just equal to a variable now we know we did it in polar form but we can also rewrite it into its original form that the integral from negative infinity positive infinity the double integral really right of e to the negative x squared plus y squared dx dy 
we weren't able to solve this in of itself, but then we converted into polar. We know this equals pi, <laughs> right? So if we know this equals pi, we can do some exponents, exponent math. We know that e to the negative x squared plus y squared also equals e to the negative x squared times e to the negative y squared. But what's special about multivariable integrals is that one multivariable integral treats one variable, all variables that don't concern the integral, as constants. So in this first integral, the dx integral, only this guy mattered. The e to the negative y squared is out of the question. It's a constant. So we can rewrite this integral here as the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then this is only concerning the y. So e to the negative y squared. And then we can go a little bit deeper into the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity here of e to the negative x squared. And this is d, excuse me, not dy, dx, dy. Because the x squared only ever mattered to the dx, and the y squared only ever mattered to the dy. And again now, if we consider this whole piece of the integral here to be relating to x, again, that is just a constant to the y. So we can again pull this out of the integral and we can say that this here equals the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of e to the negative x squared dx times the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of e to the negative y squared dy. So we can reduce this multivariable case into, well, it looks like a product of two single variable cases, but of course, if we've just named this single variable case, this variable c, we can say, okay, clearly this variable here, this integral here is c, sorry, this integral here, this is c. I just did my bracket upside down, whoops. <laughs> so this here equals c squared. But of course, we know that the two-dimensional integral, which is what we're calling c squared he here, we know that this equals pi. So the incredible result that we have just come upon, knowing that the multivariable, uh, that using multivariable double polar integration, that the air, the volume under the two-dimensional bell curve is pi, and using this math about constant variables in double integrals, we've just come across the incredible conclusion that the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of e to the negative x squared dx squared equals pi. And of course, there's only one conclusion from there, which is that the area under the bell curve, the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of e to the negative x squared dx equals the square root of pi. That, to me, is very very cool.